So we're going to talk tonight about um, a continuation, actually, of the things that the Holy Spirit has been talking to us about for almost two weeks now. Um, I have to tell you that um, the Lord, the Holy Spirit, is being very, very clear to his children. It's not just to us. It is to his body. Amen. And it is in this day. He's talking to us. He's saying this. He's saying it over and over again now for two, almost two weeks straight. The point he is trying to make, he wants to make his point. It is very clear. It is very distinct. It is very, there's this line, as I was saying to the girls on Automa, is there is a demarcation in the spirit of this is what he is saying. And he wants us to pay attention. I will tell you that I shared with the girls a couple of things on Adam and I'm going to share with you just so that you know. Um, I've been uh, uh, stewarding God's ministry of Adonized Fragrance since June for six months. And I will tell you that um, never in all the weeks that I've done this, have I at the end of teaching gone right into prayer and said, Father, I am your servant. And I spoke what you told me to speak. I delivered the message that you told me. And now he's told me every single message. But there's something about this message the last two weeks. There's a seriousness about it. And I will tell you that um, I taught again on it on, on Wednesday. Very uh, Variations, differences, but the same message that the, that the Holy Spirit is saying. And I will tell you that I sat down to write this today. And when I was done, the fear of the Lord came over me like I've never really experienced before. So much so that I, I had to go lay down. <laughs> I laid down. I prayed. I cried. Um, I, I spoke to God. Um, I, I, was, I was troubled in my spirit. I was troubled in my spirit. There's an urgency in which the Lord is saying this, and I cannot adequately articulate the seriousness of the season. I can't. So I come before you, Father, in the name of Yeshua, and I, I commit this message unto you, Father. Holy Spirit, I ask in the name of Yeshua that your presence would fall in this platform on each one of your children, that the word that is given, oh Lord, that you would put it in their heart, that you would put it on good soil, that you would water it, and that the harvest would come forth. I say even before I deliver this word, Lord God, I am your obedient servant. And I am blindly obedient to deliver your word. Oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We have discussed um, what the Holy Spirit has been saying very clearly to his body. I know that uh, the girls heard a little bit of portion of this on Wednesday, but I'm going to say it for those that, that you didn't only because I want you to really understand the, the intensity in which the Holy Spirit is talking and the confirmation. Jonathan and I have both heard uh, the Holy Spirit talking about um, being mindful, being watchful about the words that come out of our mouth, about what we say, what we speak. You either speak life or you speak death. Interestingly enough, um, yesterday, or maybe it was the day before, it was, it was on Wednesday, um, I had gotten done with doing the teaching, um, getting ready for the teaching for Adonized Fragrance, and said to Eric, come on, let's go. We got some things we have to do. Um, let's go get grocery shopping, things like that. We got in the car, we got our shopping done, and we're coming back. And I said, hey, let's just throw on this person uh, that we we somewhat follow. We haven't heard 
her in a while. She started to talk and started to say everything that I had talked about the Wednesday before, using the same word, using the exact same scriptures, everything. And she went on for 15, 20 minutes and then shifted right into what I had just gotten done writing for that night. So the Holy Spirit is talking to all of his children. It's not just us. Um, I had taken a break, jumped on TikTok for a second. The first thing I saw was somebody posting, be careful about the words you speak. They either bring life or they bring death. Amen. We've had numerous confirmations that this is indeed what the Holy Spirit is saying to his body. And for those that have ears, listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying. The Holy Spirit is preparing us for what is needed in this hour and the season. We have been talking for almost two weeks, different variations of this message, right? But all the same message. Have you pulled together enough to question him on what he's saying and why he's saying it? So let's review what the Spirit has been saying that you must do. He is saying that you must let go of your past behavior. He is saying that you must let go of your past patterns, past mindsets, old patterns of speech. And he is asking some really poignant questions. What are you speaking? What words are you speaking? What are you confessing every time you communicate with someone? What kind of environment are you allowing yourself to be saturated in? What report are you listening to? Whose report are you listening to? Who are you allowing to speak into your life? What are you allowing into your ear gates, into your eye gates? And are you guarding your heart? And most importantly, out of all of those questions, what he continues to ask, and he has asked many, many times in the last two to three weeks, who do you say I am? Who do you say I am? So why do you think he's asking that question? Have you asked yourself that? Why is he asking this question and why is he saying it so many times? Is he asking you to probe or to search your heart or to inventory what you believe and perhaps what still is not yielded before him? Is he asking those questions that you would look deep into your heart to know the answer? Who do you say that I am? Is there a meaning behind that question he is asking? Now listen, y'all. If y'all know your God, you know he never asks the question just to be frivolous. There's a point to it. There's a meaning behind it. So what is the Lord asking? What's he getting at when he says, who do you say I am? Am I the God over every situation you face? Am I the God who is able? Am I the God who can do all things and all things are possible through? Am I the God who can comfort you and sustain you? Those are what he's really asking. Who do you say I am? Now, your natural instinctual reaction will be, of course, Lord. Of course we do. Of course we can trust you. But when push comes to shove, do you really believe it? Do you? Do you believe the scripture and the Holy Spirit and that he is able? 
the word declares in Mark 9. We're not going to read it. It's chapter uh, 14 through 29. And I'm going to surmise, I'm going to um, give you a summation. A father brings his boy to the disciples. This boy is possessed by a, a, a demon. The demon is afflicting him, oppressing him. He causes him to fall down to the ground, to have seizures, go into convulsions, and foam at the mouth. The demon has also tried throwing him in the fire. He's tried throwing him in the water. The disciples can't cast him out. Try as they might. Amen? They couldn't do it. The father then says to Jesus, if you can do anything, take pity on us. And Jesus replied back with a question, if I can? Everything is possible for the one that believes. And immediately the boy's father says, I do believe. I do believe. Help me overcome my disbelief. What unbelief remains in your heart that would say, is he able? So my question would be, why is it that we panic when something happens to us and we're faced with trouble? It's not that you don't believe, because on some level you do. The question is, and I believe that this is what the Lord is saying, do you believe me with your whole heart that there be no shadow of doubt in your heart, that doubt would not linger there, causing you to question? And the Lord is showing you and me, I'm talking to myself as well, what is not yet yielded in your heart when you have that kind of reaction, when you panic, when you don't know what to do and your mind just goes somewhere else because it jumps right back into the old man, the old pattern, the old behavior, the old emotions. It just takes in like that. Now, the Bible says that we are a new creature in Second Corinthians. We are a new creature being transformed. Glory to glory. It is a process. But the Lord is saying, drop the old. Drop the old patterns. Drop the old mindset. Remember, in Matthew chapter 12, verse 34, declare that out of the abundance of the, the heart, the mouth speaks. So when things come to us and we panic and all that stuff starts coming out, it's from the abundance of your heart. So in essence, what you speak tells on your heart. So when you're faced with something and something contrary to the word of God comes out, God is showing you a signal of what is really going on in your heart. Pay attention. Those are the matters in which we need to fall on our knees and start praying to God and say, oh, my, listen to that. <laughs> listen to that. I acknowledge what is not yet yielded to you. I thought that it was, but it lingers there in the shadow that you didn't even know about. Your speech tattletales on your heart. So listen to what you say, because in essence, it really tells you your level of belief. So in Matthew chapter 9, verse 18, a leader in the synagogue came and knelt before him, which is Jesus, and said, my daughter has just died. But come and put your hands on her and she will live. And Jesus got up and went with him and his disciples. Jumping down to verse 23. 
When Jesus entered the synagogue leader's house and saw, pay attention to this, and saw the crowd and people playing pipes, he said, go away. The girl is not dead, but sleeps. They laughed at him after after the crowd had been outside, he went in and he took the girl by the hand and she got up. Now let's understand. These people understood death. They seen it. They understand it. They know it when they see it. They weren't mistaken. The girl was dead. Right? They knew that she had died. The whalers were already in the house making noise, capital noise, N-O-I-S-E. The pipes were playing. Morning music was set and playing. More noise being played. And notice that Jesus entered the house and put all of them outside of the house put all of them out. He took authority and put all of that noise that was happening within the house outside. He created an environment in which he could move unimpeded and without distraction. He created an environment which he could speak, take action to represent what he knew was possible. We, in the same way, need to put outside all of the noise that goes on in our head and all around about us, that causes distraction to us, that causes distraction to our walk, our time with God, our time of prayer, our time of worship, and our time of just being in his presence. That is to include racing thoughts, our doubts, the old patterns of thought, the old patterns of behavior that would love to step forward and play a part in responding to the trouble that we're in or we're being faced with. Amen. We need to put outside the people who do not benefit us, who drain us, who gossip and complain around us, and do not have the mind of Christ. What kind of environment are you setting yourself in? Amen. Is it conducive to hearing the word of the Lord? To gaining perspective of what he has to say? Or are we calling everybody we know and just venting and just pouring out and letting our panic take over? Right? You set yourself up for either victory or failure. You set yourself up for failure when you hang around with the people who are not consecrated unto the Lord like you are. Who are not like-minded like you. And if you continue in their company, it is easy to become enslaved to their attitude. To their beliefs and to their mindsets. Do what is necessary to position yourself in Christ and establish yourself being rooted and planted on a firm foundation. Stop going back to the familiar when trouble comes. Amen. The word says in Psalm 42, verse 7, the deep calls unto the deep. Surround yourself with people that in the day of trouble, you can pick up the phone and say, I need prayer. I need help. Can we talk this out? Can we seek and inquire of the Lord together? Because I will tell you, if you go to friends or family members that do not know the Lord, they are going to counsel you wrong. And that old pattern of behavior is going to come up and it's not going to benefit you. Create an environment just as Christ did. 
silence the noise, confess your doubt, and call upon your God who is waiting to speak to you. Pray and ask specifically if there is anything in your heart that is dark. Ask him to bring it to the light so that you may sit down and confess and reason together. The Lord declares in his word that if you are faithful to come and confess, that he is faithful to forgive and to then wash you, cleanse you, and even though you come in filthy rags, to make you whiter than snow. He goes further to say he will take that and he'll throw it into the sea of forgetfulness. Let's not forget we are talking about the God of the universe who knows all, who sees all, who understands and perceives everything. He chooses. It is an active choice on his part to forget your sin. But then he separates you as far as the east is from the west, not to be bothered by that again. And I'll be honest with you. We say a lot of times on this platform that being one of the foundation or principles of this ministry, we have said, and we will continue to say, that we are transparent, always. We are always transparent. We meet um, once a week to discuss the things that need to be discussed, right? Things that need to be talked about. But most of the time, because we've gotten to the point where the, uh, all the things that need to be planned and taken care of and, and, and things of that nature, we pray. And usually we all take uh, our, I don't want to say our turn, but we all uh, seek the Lord. On Thursday, we all prayed. We were praying. Jonathan prayed. And then Eric prayed and it was silent. And I just felt like the Lord said, mm, do not pray. And so I sat there and I sat there and I was like, okay, all right. We're just going to wait on you, Lord. We're going to wait on you. And while we were waiting, the Lord spoke to Jonathan, revealed amazing thing. And I hope that when the Lord releases him to talk about that, he will. But the second he started to talk and talk about this revelation, then God said, go ahead, pray. Amen. And so I prayed. Let me correct that. I did not pray. The Holy Spirit prayed through me. And what was interesting is the Lord led me to start praying about past disappointments, past discouragements, unresolved discouragements, and how they linger. You might not necessarily know because you know what? You've forgiven. You've done all the necessary work. But somehow there's still something there in the shadow, right? There's still something that causes you to have a reaction, which would be an old pattern, an old behavior, an old uh, emotion that comes up, right? We were all led through this prayer to just let it go. Just let it go. The Lord cannot put new wine in an old wineskin. Amen? It doesn't work. We keep talking about this new season, which is bringing new wine. The Holy Spirit has new wine, new oil, that there's been a shift in the spirit. But you cannot put new wine or new oil into something old. It will not operate appropriately. It will not function in the way that it was created to function. And you, my friends, will fall short because it cannot hold the capacity of something new. It doesn't have the functionality to do so. There needs to be a new space, a new capacity to be filled with the Holy Spirit. 
that can be put and can't be put into the old. And notice that the disappointments and the discouragements that have laid in your heart, what do they represent to you? It could be anything. Disappointment in dreams that you had that never came to life, in essence, dead to you now, a desire for something that never came to be, whether it be a relationship, a career, your dream home, whatever it is for you, whatever those discouragements are. Did you have expectations for a while, but now they're just dead, you just let it go? What if it was even a prophetic word? It's taken decades for that word to come through. And have you forgotten it? Have you stopped praying about it? Have you stopped speaking the Lord over it and saying, what about you said? Amen. So let's look back at verse 23 for a moment in Matthew chapter 9. The man said, the child was dead. Jesus said, she only sleeps. Dead is how man sees it, completely gone, dead, not, not, not coming back, not resurrecting. But with God, all things are possible. Amen? It sleeps, or she sleeps, meaning that it could be, she could be revived. It can have a new breath breathed into it. The new wine can enter and bring life. And the Lord put on my heart so strongly to share with you. And so if you will, open up your Bibles. The other night, this was so strong on my spirit. So strong. So open up your Bibles to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 37. And we're going to read... Uh, verses 1 through 10. Ezekiel 37, 1 through 10. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by, my, by the Spirit of the Lord, and he set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley bones that were very dry. And he asked me, son of man, can you, can these bones live? And I said, sovereign Lord, you alone know. And then he said to me, prophesy to those bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put my breath in you and you will come to life. And then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied. And as I as I was commanded, and as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, bone to bone, and I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come breath from the four winds and breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded and breath entered him. They came to life and stood up to their feet, a vast army. Amen. So son of man, can these bones live or better yet spoken, my child, can the disappointment and the discouragement and the things that lay dead that were once alive in your heart, can they live? 
Can they live? And we say, Sovereign Lord, only you know. Only the Lord knows the heart of every man. Only the Lord knows your heart and what you need. Only the Lord knows you completely and is able to direct your path. In this hour, the Lord is saying, take inventory of your heart while it can be taken. There is an urgency that I felt so strong in my spirit today and led me to John chapter 9, verse 4. And Jesus says, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is the day. The night cometh when no man can work. Amen. The Lord is saying, do what is necessary to get your heart posture right with me. Come to me. Talk to me. Get yourself positioned correctly in Christ. Begin to speak the word of God over yourself. Begin to prophesy into your situation. Prophesy into the dead places, the dry bones. The places where discouragement and disappointment are deep in the shadow of your heart that you have, by coping mechanisms or whatever, have had to push it aside and move on so that it doesn't overtake you. Prophesy into those dead places. Prophesy into your environment and your atmosphere and declare what the Sovereign Lord says about every situation. Prophesy and set the words that come to pass you, your lips. When the words come out of your mouth, your, your words are on assignment. They are either going to speak life into a dead place and dead bones, or they are going to speak death, and you will harvest what you speak. Speak life and not death. The Lord is saying, clean up your association. Clean up your relationship. Stop all the noise that would distract you. Take it all. Put it outside. Create for yourself an environment in which you can seek the Lord. And the Lord is saying, Stop with all the distractions and cleave to me in this season. There is an urgency. So much so that when I was done writing this, I told you the fear of the Lord came upon me this afternoon. So much so. It drove me to go lay down and to seek the Lord and to pray and cry and say, if there be anything in me, if there's anything in the dark, if there's anything hidden, if any discouragement, any disappointment still linger in which will ignite an old response from me, from the old man. Take it away. I confess it before you. Let's sit and reason together. Let's get rid of this. Tell me what needs to be done so that it can be eradicated, so that I am found in you, that I am found in your presence, that I am found not wanting when I go to judgment. And the Lord says to me, Go away from me, for I never knew you. Settle it here. Settle it now. Before you find yourself in a place where you the, your, the, the time of your visitation has passed. And you no longer have the time or the opportunity 
Do not be complacent to be where you are now and do not enter into a false security thinking that you're safe. You know Christ. Everything's good. It's not. And this is why the Holy Spirit has been talking and bringing this point up for two weeks now, uh, meeting after meeting after meeting. Please. Please, I implore you, allow the fear of the Lord to come upon you so that you can cleanse your heart before him in this season. It is imperative. The Holy Spirit would not be bringing this up time after time after time if it were not of the essence. We know that we're living in a very unstable time. We don't know the the day or the hour. But the Holy Spirit is saying, take heed. Listen. Listen. For those who have ears, hear. The hour is late. Find yourself in the presence of God. And work out what needs to be worked out. The word declares to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. I was doing that this afternoon. And I will tell you, as I said to Eric, I came in here and sat down so we can start this meeting. I was like, ooh. The fear of the Lord is on me again. It is on me again. Please do not let this night go by without dropping to your knees or getting in your heart posture. Go have a conversation with your Lord, your King. Because even though we do believe, help my unbelief. Amen. The Lord is speaking. He's ready to receive you. He's ready to have an audience with you. He's always ready. Go speak to your God. Confess of all the noise and the clamor and all the things that have been going on in your head, in your heart, in your thoughts, in your emotions. So when the day of trouble comes, friends, and there is a season coming of trouble, that we don't panic, that we are not afraid Because our whole heart is consecrated unto him. Because our whole heart has been given over to him, not just portions that we were comfortable with, that we're completely yielded, that we're completely surrendered, that we have an assurance. His word declares that his mercies are new every morning. Have you made a habit of every night talking to him before you go to bed? If I have done anything today, if I have sinned today, knowingly or unknowingly, Father, forgive me. Speak to me. Talk to me. Let's work it out. Show me where I went wrong that I might not go wrong tomorrow. It is a season that is serious. It is a season 
where the sovereign Lord says, begin to prophesy into your situation. Find out what the sovereign Lord has to say about it and then speak it. Amen. Let's open up your mics and let's talk about it. Hey, Christopher. <laughs> I hope you don't mind. I'd like to sum up what you talked about. Amen. I've written a lot of notes. Amen. Okay. Uh, speak life. Uh, must let go of the past behaviors and speech. What we are speaking, what we report, who you are allowing to be around, who you are guarding your heart, who you who do you say I am? Um, help me come over my disbelief. Uh, I put Proverbs three five five to six would help that. Uh, put all the noise away that distracts from God. Old patterns, people, gossip, complaining. Um, Peter, that are not people that do not come in alignment with the Lord. Psalms 42, 7. Silence the noise. Pray anything that is dark. Or pray anything that's against dark. Just let it go. Declare everything. <clears throat> I got the... Uh, no urgency. Get right and alignment with the Lord. Uh, submit yourself, discipline and obedience. Uh, do not believe you're safe through your arrogance and pride. Uh, cleanse your heart before him. Get into your closet. Um, whole heart is con con I can't even say that. Consecrated right. towards our God. Night prayer. Ask of repentance. And it's the season to prophesy. Amen. So I just want to uh, say thanks. Um, you know, I think it's something that is a reflection on ourselves that we got to look at what we can do, what I can do to myself. So I just want to say thank you. Amen. God is good. It is a season to make sure that you are consecrated unto the Lord. Amen. You are separated that you are seeking his face. You are seeking his will. Like never before. There's an urgency. There's an remember, urgency. Remember Christopher, Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And if you can't do it, then you ask the Lord to step in to help you do it. Amen. That's what God's been telling me to do. Things that I thought that were under the under under the rug, everything was taken care of. There were still those little trigger points. And I was like, God, I don't know how to pray for this. I don't know how to get rid of it, but you know how to do it. So I'm asking on your behalf to remove it from me because I can't do it. I need you to do it for me. And he'll step in and do it for you. He'll change. He'll change your heart. And one more important, just one more little caveat I'd like to add. The life that you are living right now at this very moment is the life that you spoke into existence from the past. Mm -hmm. So whatever your words spoke back years ago is the life that you have now. Mm -hmm. words are powerful proverbs 18 power is in the tongue either life or death and you will eat its fruit and i kid you not what karen has preached tonight is absolutely 100 percent the word that the lord is speaking right now amen amen because Eric was there on Wednesday night with the guys and a lot of what you spoke about was paraphrased by what we said on, on Wednesday night. And I had no idea what you were talking about Wednesday. No, Eric didn't know either. And we just spoke almost verbatim what you said, but in a different way to the guys. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that's what I was saying to everybody. For two weeks now, the Holy Spirit has been saying the same thing, just in a, in a different way, but the same thing. Yep. And when the Lord repeats himself this way, what is he What is He requiring of you? Because there's something that's required. There is something that is required, or he would not say it multiple times. That's right. So that's why I'm saying, what is he saying? What does he mean? He doesn't just randomly come out with questions. Who do you say I am? He's asking the question because he's wanting to know your answer. Who do you say that he is? Amen. Tina, you have a question or a comment? No, actually, I wanted to, to speak to this message that you guys delivered tonight about these old patterns because you said it on Wednesday and I was dealing with an issue yesterday and I started to declare and I've been feeling the spirit of offense on me because I felt like I had three separate meetings that it was one, two sucker punches, one after the other, just deep disrespect and it hit me wrong and I could not, I, I felt almost inconsolable last night. I was very upset and I asked the Lord what he wanted to meet me to read because you know, and so I spent a lot of time in Leviticus for whatever reason he wanted me to read Leviticus. And there were a lot of other things, you know, in there, but I fell on my old patterns. That's what happened. I was angry. I was like, why am I even in this job? Cause I don't feel, you know, and I was declaring that I didn't feel good enough. I feel hobbled. I'm trying to do this job with two hands behind my back, hopping on one leg, blindfolded, playing whack-a-mole with the fly swatter, you know, and it's, it's very hard. And I was speaking all this very negative stuff and, um, you know, and, and I couldn't get it. I could get myself into that space, you know, where I could just give it all to God for quite a while. And so this was so good because I need to spend some time on my knees. And I woke up today think like I just screwed up. I screwed up so badly. I didn't think I would react that way. And I did. And it took me a while to get to the place that, okay, God, I trust you. I'm sorry. I trust you. Whatever you need me to do, I'm here. I'll stay here as long as I need to. It, I'm having a very hard time not being able to be myself, having to not be direct, be indirect, having to deal with this continuous disrespect and not feeling like I can stick up for myself the way that I know I need to and, and because I'm hobbled and or i and I know that I'm speaking this stuff, I need to speak better, but I was really just really struggling. And, and this word is just so timely. It just came together. And I understand why it happened because the Lord revealed to me and then hopefully me sharing this with you, it reveals to you guys too, how I fell into my old patterns here. And I need to spend some time with the Lord here. So thank you so much for the word. This was really great. Well, let me say to you, God is good, but let me also say to them, and I know that it's hard to have to have gone through that, but really, if you look at it, Tina, it is really an opportunity because God was revealing to you what was in your heart so that you could deal with it so it can be dealt with. Amen. Yes. It's an opportunity. Amen to take and say, I hear you, Lord, I see what you're saying. And now let's talk about it so that I can confess it before you so that we can get it right. Amen. He's so good. He's so good to bring this to me and then bring me this message to let me know that it's still there. And I need to, I need to deal with this. And I keep going back and kind of spinning on a couple things. And I'm like, why am I doing this? I need to get right with the Lord. So thank you. <clears throat> God is good. God is good. And you know, it's like I like uh, he had said, your your what comes out of your mouth, out of the abundance of your heart, tells on your heart. So listen when faced with a problem or a trouble or a concern, listen to where your well, listen to where your thoughts go. Listen to what your mouth speaks, because it's going to tell you your heart condition. And God is good that he will reveal it to you. He'll put you in situations so that it ha it's forced out. It's forced out so that you can acknowledge it and recognize it and bring it to him. Like, like I said, do not be lulled into a false 
sense of security just because I'm saved. I asked Jesus into my heart. But there is also other requirements that are, have to be made. You can't just rest on the fact I've asked Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. Amen? We have to go through the processes of cleansing out the old to make room for the new. I was telling the girls on Wednesday that, um, and I'm going to tell them myself, <laughs> to be transparent, I'm going to tell them myself, we were moving, and I'm sure that Eric will tell you that it's true. We were moving from Virginia to Texas. I had four, four U boxes that I had completely filled. I mean, and from to back all the way up to the door to like the door, I mean, we're pushing the door shut to close it. We had my car completely filled. We had his truck completely filled. And I found myself throwing very expensive things out that I had attachment to. And I was not pleased. <laughs> I had a little bit of an attitude, probably a big attitude, and I was not happy. And I am telling you, it is very rare that the Lord speaks to me like this, but as I have a garbage bag in one hand, I'm tossing things out, and I have now tossed thousands of dollars of stuff out, and I'm complaining about it, the Lord said, Stop it firmly. Stop it. And I just, he caught me. <laughs> he never, he doesn't talk to me like that, that firm. Stop it. Get rid of the old to make room for the new. And I was like, you know what, Lord? You are absolutely right. And I'm going to change my attitude because if I can get new, I will. And it's the same thing with the spirit. The spirit has new wine, has new oil. You can't put new wine in an old wine skin. It'll burst. So the new, you have to get rid of the old to make room so that the, you have more capacity to carry, to hold. In this season that we're going into, We've asked to be the light in the darkness. We've asked to be the salt of the earth. How are you going to rely on your old morals when you need something new, new wine, new oil to give away? Revival's coming. Amen? Revival is coming. The move of the Lord is going to happen. And you want to make sure that you have the new wine and you have capacity to carry the new oil so that you can help. You can be that light. Tracy? Hi, everyone. Um, <clears throat> hey. Um, I have a question, but before that, I just wanted to um, touch on what Tina said. So yesterday I was, um, it, I just had remembered that um, a doctor had asked me for some details that I couldn't give them off the top of my head. So it required me to go back into the hospital's database <clears throat> to look at my records. And as I'm going through the records from May of this year all the way on, um, I found what I was looking for, but there was additional details in there that my oncologist put in that immediately, I don't know if I can call this a spirit of offense, but it, you know what? It was a spirit of insecurity. Thank you, God. It was a spirit of insecurity because of the details that she put on there. And immediately I started to spiral. So I got the information I needed, but then I started to feel very insecure. And I'm not an insecure person, but just what was there and everything that happened upset me. And I found myself feeling upset. And when I went to bed, I was venting to God. Like I talked to him every night and in my quiet time alone, I was venting to him and Jesus. And in that moment, the Holy Spirit or Jesus stopped me and was like, reminding me, what does the word say? Because I had spiraled into feeling like I was a victim and feeling like 
things were being intentionally done to me. And that's not my normal thought pattern. And that is something that I had actually been delivered from because there's a lot of um, the ladies in my family, the women in my family tend to have that kind of mentality. And that's something growing up that I was like, I don't want any part of. So I made a conscious decision not to have that mentality. Then I found myself really down deep in the trench in the trenches of feeling like I am targeted and I'm a victim. And I don't, I didn't like that. And immediately I started thinking, immediately the Holy Spirit brought to me um scriptures and literally told me, repeat those scriptures and pray that over yourself and over your situation. And when I prayed that, I realized one, I'm not a victim. To I've got God with me. I've got the victory. I don't have to be afraid. I've got Jesus Christ on the inside. I have victory through Christ Jesus. I have the word of God that the Holy Spirit is taking me through every day and revealing the mysteries of God. This is naturally an opportunity. And as I'm repeating this, the Holy Spirit's ministering to my heart and telling me, kind of giving me insight as to where God has me in this moment in my, my life and why there's a lot of benefit to where I am. It's a great opportunity for me to get even closer to God and not have the distraction of work in the way, especially because I was someone who used to fast all the time and I would try to fast while I'm working. And if anybody who's had to do that, you know, it's, it's kind of difficult and it really does take away time from you really getting into the word while you're fasting. So um, I say that to say, definitely um, take it to God in prayer just like what Karen said. And be honest. I was honest and raw last night. I was like, this is how I feel, God, because I can't hide it from you anyways. And I can't lie to you because you're going to know. And he will definitely reveal. And sometimes, you know, he does have to talk to us a little bit rough. You know, Karen, I've, I remember one time, um, two years ago, I've mentioned in the group on Wednesday that I worked with a witch. She was proud to tell everybody within earshot that she was a witch. And um, one day I was complaining about her and asking God, you know, why do you still have her there? I have prayed. I've tried being nice to her. I have prayed over myself. I prayed for her. I prayed over my, my, my workspace and she's still there. And God literally stopped me in the middle of my complaining. I couldn't even get the rest of my sentence out. And he had to remind me that he is sovereign and He's the reason why I'm still there and her witchcraft workings are not working. And it was a very humbling experience because I was driving and I was slowing down behind another car to make a left-hand turn into a plaza because um, we have HomeSense. So for you guys, it's Ross, the same company, just named different. And um, I was just looking forward to walking around there at my lunch. And as I'm complaining and slowing down behind this car, God's voice was so audible in the car And his grace is so wonderful that I didn't crash into the back of the car in front of me. Mm -hmm. But he was very firm. And from that day, I stopped complaining about her because I had to recognize that his power is at work. So definitely, Tina, if you're still here, definitely take it to God in prayer and um, confess what's in your heart. And he will reveal to you in that moment. Um. But my question is, that's why I put my hand up, (laughs) is um, a lot of us have made negative confessions throughout our life. I know that I did growing up, didn't know, didn't understand. You know, you just kind of say whatever everybody else is saying. Like one of my friends, I've had to tell her a lot to stop saying, you know, she's dead. Like she'll she'll say something and be like, I'm and I'm not going to say the rest of that. But you know what I'm trying to say? Um. And I would tell her, you know, don't say that, speak life over yourself, but it's trendy to say. So Mm -hmm. how do you cancel those things? Because I've, now that I know, especially with this teaching, um, and I've heard this a couple of years ago, I started to be really conscious of what comes out of my mouth because the Holy Spirit has said to me, ah, 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 how do you cancel the things that you have said that spoke negativity? Because we know what the Bible says about um, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Is it enough just to say, I cancel this? Or do you have to say something specific? Or do you have to say that and fast? Like, how do you cancel that so it doesn't manifest into your life? Because I know that, Jonathan, you said that our life right now is a combination of what we said, but I've never spoken cancer over myself. So, and I, that's something I'm still struggling with. 
um, to a certain extent um, to, to ask God, like, hey, why is this happening? <laughs> you know, is this a Job moment? Like, why is this happening? Um, hang, on. hang on. So let me, let me just correct you right away. It's, it's, yes, you do create. You have the ability to create. We talked about that. When we open up our mouth, our words are on assignment. We speak either life or death. But yeah. there are other, there are other factors that come into play as well. It's not just the the words that you say. So it's not that you said, "I would love to have cancer," right? It's not that you in, invited it that way. But we've talked prior, and there are other instances in which it opens up those doors. Unforgiveness right. opens okay. up those doors, and we've we've talked about that. And and I, I do remember you um, saying that there was that issue. Right. And mm -hmm. so there's other things besides the words that we speak that would open up an opportunity for those things to come in and take up residence, if you will. Right. right. Or to have an issue with that. But um, it is it is important that we be very mindful. And that is what the Holy Spirit is saying. Be mindful of what you're speaking. Do not, how many times do you mindlessly say things throughout the day? And some yeah. catchphrases, this is yeah. killing me. Yeah. Right? yeah. I'm so tired. I could just, you know, and you finish the sentence. Or you, you say know, sick and tired. Mindless about what we say and how we say yeah. it. That is what the Holy Spirit is saying. Stop that. Be very intentional about what you speak. Speak life. Ask the Lord to put a guard on your mouth so that when you go to speak something that is inappropriate or contrary to the Holy Spirit or what the Holy Spirit says, that he catches you and he will, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, the, but the, do you cancel it? Like, do you cancel past things? Like, because I know people teach on that. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I was going to address that next. But here's the thing. The fact of it is, is that those things have been released. So we are um, accountable for what we now know, mm -hmm. right? So now that we know better, we do better. And so we go to the Lord and say, I didn't know. And he knows that you didn't know. And yeah. so there is grace and there is mercy. The blood covers, right? Ask for anything that's negative to be null and void, to fall to the ground and be unproductive. But now that I know from this point moving forward, help me to be mindful about what I say. Help me to be mindful of my heart position before you, God. Mm -hmm. Help me to know what is really in my heart. The Bible says above all things, the heart is, is, is deceitful. Yeah. We have to know. And, you know, that is what I was saying when I said we cannot rest on the fact that we're saved. And we've asked Jesus. And, you know, we're going to go up to uh, be made accountable. He says we're accountable for every idle word that comes out of our mouth. And either we'll be acquitted by our words or we'll be convicted by our words. Condemned. Amen. And so now that you know, and we've been teaching this and the Holy Spirit has been saying this and he's been saying it for two weeks. He's adamant about it. Now that you know, you take a posture of now I know and now I'm accountable. And so please help me to be mindful about the words that come out of my mouth. Help me to look into my heart. So that I can come before you with clean hands and a pure heart. Amen? Mm -hmm. So that your posture before the Lord is accurate. That's what he's looking for. He's not looking for you to be perfect with every word that comes out of your mouth. We all fall short. That's never going to happen. Mm -hmm. But he's looking for the heart posture to be accurate. Let's not forget what um, uh, Pastor Rico said. We are three part person. We are spirit, we are soul, and we are body. Now our spirit before God is perfect because it's spirit of God that's in us, right? Mm -hmm. It is our soul and it is our body that we contend with. Our soul is our thoughts, our emotions, and our will. That is what he is looking for to have the correct posture. 
And so that the three of them can come into alignment to serve God. Amen. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Amen. So it's the flesh and it is the soul in which we are um, trying to rally in and bring into control and, and to bring into alignment with the spirit. Amen. So it is our flesh and it is our thought pattern, our behavior pattern, our emotions. And that is what we go before God and say, I set myself before you. I acknowledge that this is an issue. I don't know how to handle it and I don't know what to do, but you do. And so I yield myself before you and I surrender. I pour it all out in front of you, the good, the bad, the ugly. And I'm asking you to help me make it right in your eyes. You know, I told I told the girls um, on Wednesday night that the Lord has had me in, in uh, King. And it's funny because David was consecrated and had a heart for the Lord. He did wrong. He did some major things wrong. But the Lord said he is a man after my own heart, even though he did things wrong, because his heart posture was the intent to follow and keep the ways of the Lord. He passed his reign over to Solomon. The Lord came to Solomon twice in his reign. If you keep my ways, my commands, and my decrees, I will be with you because I love your father. What can I do for you? And he asked for, he said, I don't know how to be a king. I don't know how to rule over your people. I don't know. He was honest. And so I asked you for wisdom. And the Lord was so pleased. That he asked for wisdom. He said, not only will I give you wisdom, but I'll give you understanding. And not only that, but up to all of the men that have ever lived until now, you will be the wisest. And for anybody forever beyond to come, you will be the wisest man that has walked the earth. Not only that, but I will give you health and I will give you wealth and honor and a long life. If, there's always that if, if you keep my decrees, if you keep my ways, amen, that's all he had to do. Solomon was the wisest man who's ever walked this planet. He prospered in ways that were to, would probably blow our minds to this day. He was wealthy. He had everything. He built the temple of the Lord and prayed. And the Lord came with his glory and it filled the temple. He had the presence of God demonstrated in a cloud, right? How much more could you ask? And he prayed to God and God said it to him again. I will do all of these things if you will keep my ways and keep my decrees. And here we go with the old pattern coming up because he was able to do it for so long. But something snuck back in. He slipped back into the old man because he had a problem with women. And mm -hmm. he loved women. He loved many of them. Right? Yep. I think the Bible says a thousand wives. Ridiculous. But here, listen, he did not keep the commands and the decree of the Lord because he married outside of the Israelite nation, which was sanctified unto God. And when he married those women, those women brought in their gods and their idols. And before you know it, the man who had the very presence of God in the temple and spoke to God and God spoke to him and gave him dreams and all of the stuff that you could possibly ever want on this earth. Before you know it, he was setting off the high places to other gods and to other altars, to other um, to idols because his wives 
whom he did not keep the command, wanted that, and he rested on the fact, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm this. I'm this. And he walked away, and the Lord was no longer number one in his life. And he let his wife have these idols. And then the man had who, who had no enemies, the Lord himself rose up enemies against him because he did not keep his ways and his commands. And so the Lord is gracious and he is kind and he, thank you so much, Father, is long-suffering. He's been long-suffering with me. (laughs) He is long-suffering and he allows you this time right? Go before your God. It was so for everything that he has done and keep his ways and keep his commands and ask him to help you, to give you the power to do so. Amen. Go ahead, Jonathan. Amen. It was so beautiful how you segued that because the Lord wanted me to bring up a point, but you set it up so great. Okay. So it says in the Bible, Love not the world or anything in this world because he who loves the world more than God, the love of the Father is not in him. And the Holy Spirit wants to make this point. The borrower is always enslaved to the lender. The people that don't know Jesus Christ have been enslaved Mm -hmm. to the lender. And when we get around the people that have been enslaved by the lender, they're going to talk enslaved. And if you listen to the ones that are enslaved, you're going to start acting like you're enslaved. See, the world is programmed right now to speak death because that's exactly what the devil's doing right now. So as as Karen was saying, The connections that you have right now, make sure these connections are godly connections. Because I promise you, the world is in a very, very topsy-turvy state right now. So everybody that doesn't have a relationship with Jesus Christ is panicking, is fearful, is agitated. That's why these people are coming against you. The devil is setting them up against you because he doesn't want you walking in victory. So he's going to bring all of his enslaved people in your path to try to give you what they have. And we can't stoop down to that level because we have Jesus Christ who is and destroyed all captivity, set the captivity captive, right? He set the captors captive free. He set them all free. So if we're free in Jesus, we're free indeed, right? So we have to make sure that we position ourselves away from those people that are enslaved to the lender. So now is the time to cut off associations with people that are constantly enslaved to the lender. If God has not called you into those areas where these people are enslaved, You don't put yourself in those situations. You don't put yourself in those circumstances. It says in the Bible that love has, I mean, um, light has no fellowship with darkness and to avoid all appearances of evil. So unless the Lord calls you into those regions, he is not going to deliver you from those things because he never told you to go in there in the first place. You understand? So you're going to get whooped. You're going to get whooped up on because God never told you to go there. So unless the Lord tells you to go there, unless the Lord builds the house, you are laboring in vain. Do not go into areas where the Lord has told you not to go. Only go in those areas 
where you know the Holy Spirit told you to go, because when you go in there, there's a purpose and a reason for you to go in there, and the Holy Spirit is going to guide you, and he's going to be with you in those circumstances that you're in. Amen. That's one of the things that I had said the other night, too. Now, obviously, we know that you have to work and you have to go to your job, right? It's something that we you, you have to do, but the Lord will give you provision in those places. Amen. He knows that you have to work. He knows that you have to earn money. He knows that there, there's a place that you have to be, right? You, you work. And so there's a grace that goes there so that you, especially when Christopher, I know when you were saying that you work in a warehouse, you said that last week. And so there's a grace that allows you to be in there, right? Because the Lord knows that you're there. And like I said to you last week, who's to say that the Lord has not prepared you for such a time as this to be a witness to those people and say, not saying that you necessarily have to come out and, and, and be witnessing to them, but you're an example to them and how you behave and how you act and how you carry yourself and the words in which you communicate, right? So even with Tina, with the, with the issues that you have had at work, and you feel as if you've been spoken down to and you have, um, you know, had a struggle. But who is to say that you are not there for such a time as this, that the Lord is giving you the ability and the grace to be able to be in that position and be an example to those of how we elevate above the noise, how we speak. And not out of emotion, but out of what we know, that we do not, you know, get offended, but that we speak in accordance with the way the Lord has told us that we conduct ourselves. There's a certain way. Amen. And it's an elevated way. And it's, it's, it's interesting how the enemy does. He does try to poke you, right? He does try to elicit a reaction. But you know what the fact of it is? And I used to, I, I've told you my, my career, but the fact of it is there were many times where I had to go into the boardroom and I would say, and this y'all works everywhere. I am the dominant spirit in this room. I am the dominant spirit in this room. And I will not be pushed around spiritually. You stand your ground. And that emanates. So, so in the natural, in the spiritual, right? So in the spiritual, the natural. And so you present yourself in a professional manner, in a professional tone, carrying yourself always in excellence, as the Lord did. People came up and said things to the Lord, too. Spit on them. Did all kinds of stuff. He never lost his cool. Amen? We carry and conduct ourselves the same way. Christopher, you're muted. Jonathan had some homework for us last Friday. Yes. Solteria. So I looked it up. Um, in the English version, it says little brother and unmarried status. In the Bible, in the Greek, it says deliverance from molestation of enemies the soul's safety of salvation, of mosaic salvation. And I was trying to refer to biblical. Uh, the only thing it came to was Jeremiah 16.1. But I, I couldn't understand it. Um, I couldn't relate it to what that means. And maybe one of you guys can explain that. Hold on. Before you engage with Solteria, just, just want to make sure that the 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 threshing floor has been cleared and that everyone here uh had the ears to hear and have the heart to know what has been said tonight because when we go from the state of which we didn't know like uh karen was saying to the state in which we doubt now know we're now accountable now's the time to seek uh understanding and what has been spoken so that you can't go back and say, I never knew. So 
before we move on to Soteria, ask your questions, Jeffrey. I just want to say um, I definitely agree with um, today's teaching because uh, I guess I want to say if I, for the last couple, three or four days, ever since you did the teaching on watch what you say or whatever. So I, had, like I said, I had said something earlier that day and I'm like, oh, you know what I'm saying? And then you came with the teaching. I'm like, okay, cool. And then since then, okay, I've been watching what I've been saying. I'm noticing why God is saying, keep your, you know what I'm saying? If your circle, keep your circle right. I understand that because it's, it's a lot of people in my building who be talking about some, they know God and they want to come to the Bible study and this and that, but they never come. All they do is sit around and gossip about a situation that's going on with Gregory. You know what I'm saying? And I've been telling them like, it's like we're not, so I've just been falling back or whatever and, and just staying in my house. And, um, the spirit has been leading me to um, basically deal with the things that I do need to deal with. And I have, I told God last night, I think the night before that, like, man, I, I got a problem with this. Help me let this go. Cause it's hard. I don't know how to let it go. Please help me. So I did say that. And, um, what was the last one? Got that good. Let this go. And I forgot. Oh, and um the okay, so my brother called me today. My brother called. Well, he ain't called, but he sent me a, a video or whatever, him listening to our old music. And I was like, he like, oh man, bro, this and that, uh, uh, and I'm like. Yeah, it was cool. You know what I'm saying? It was cool for that time. But it's like, honestly, I'm embarrassed. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm embarrassed because I don't I don't want to be that person no more. And I'm really at that point where it's like I'm trying to let everything go. And it's like the Holy Spirit has been just nudging me, you know what I'm saying, to do basically everything that you've been talking about. I've been doing it. And it's like, it's, it's, it's amazing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For real. God is good. Yeah. I have to tell you, I know that we said it last week, but I, I'm going it, to, it's, it's so good. It's worth saying again. I'm very proud of the position that you've taken. I am very proud that not only do you take the heart position privately, but you do it publicly as well. And the fact of it is, Jeffrey, and it's for, for everybody, and me too. Listen, I, I, have, I have friends that are unsaved. I have family that is unsaved, right? We've taught, Eric has talk, talked about iniquity, how iniquity comes through the bloodline, right? Mm -hmm. There are some times when we have to sever that because we cannot act like our family anymore. We are now in the family of God and we are citizens of the kingdom of heaven. We live among them, but we are not of them. We of, are of a new order through the order of Melchizedek, Amen. And so we live our life in a posture consecrated unto God in going into the new, and we have to forsake the old. Now, listen, I'm not saying do not talk with your family. That's not what I'm saying. But I am saying when your family uh, portrays or carries a pattern that is not healthy, and it is wrong and it goes against the spirit of God. You have to put your, you have to put a distance between you and say, I just don't do that anymore. I just don't believe that anyway more. And if I have to come back a little bit, then that is what I have to do because above all things, protect your heart and guard your heart. Right. And so when your brother calls and he wants to do some rap music and stuff that is not glorifying God clearly you just have to say, I don't do that anymore. That's not who I am. I've changed. And yeah. this is what I do now. And this is how, uh, this is the name that I go by. This is now my, my new name, right? You know what? It was cool, whatever, back then. But that's not who I am anymore. I am now this, right? So good job. You're doing a great job. You really are. You are, you are doing good. 
you know, and the Holy Spirit, like you said, will lead you into wisdom and all truth, right? So if there's gossiping going on in your building, you don't take part of that. You just don't. And if they say something to you, that's when you say, you say that you believe in God, but this is contrary to the spirit of God. God says this is wrong and I can't be a part of it. Sure. If you want to talk about the things of God, love to share with you, love to pray with you. But once it goes past that point, that's where we're done. I can't be in that environment. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So when I, I ask God, I'm like, I don't know how it's going to happen. I'm like, man, I need a cop so I can, um, so I ain't got to ask, you know what I'm saying? People yeah. for rides no more because people are very negative and, you know what I'm saying? Like how when the um, Bible study started or whatever, and um, I took the mic off and he's like, oh man, why you ain't tell me? And I'm like, they didn't, they didn't hit you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's like, I, I definitely see, I see it all just manifest and I see it. Like I see it. Yeah. And that's what you ask. Give me eyes to see. Give me ears to hear. It's not only your physical, it's your mm-hmm. spiritual as well. Right? Yeah. Open up my spiritual eyes that I could see clearly. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And before we move on, I'd like to, to close this 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 part with scripture to let you know that he walks with you hand in hand. He he is constantly with you. He knows the condition of where you once were or where you are now. And where you're going in the future. So join me. I'm in Romans chapter 8 and verse 26. And I'm going to read from the King James, okay? So uh, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which we can which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the heart, the hearts, knoweth what is the mind of the spirit, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. And I dare declare this over this entire uh, family tonight that we have been called to his purpose and that we are to stand on the rock which is Christ Jesus knowing that we are not perfect knowing that he takes the good the bad and the ugly of ourselves and when we turn that over to him he he gets the glory He does the changes. He is made manifest in us. So look bright. Look at the hope. Because that is where our faith is. And his name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Amen. So Jonathan, do you want to just talk about Soteria with Christopher? Because it was your homework assignment. Uh, Well, Soteria, you don't have to really go in depth with it. You just have to know the, the major meaning of it. And Soteria means it's deliverance, it's preservation, it's safety and protection and it's salvation. So deliverance, preservation. What's the saying, Jeremiah 29, 11? For I have plans for you, declares the Lord, plans to give you hope and a future. He's going to preserve your life. If you walk in his ways, if you glorify him, by keeping his commandments his purpose for you is of good not evil he wants you to delight in his ways he says if 
you delight in my see the church only takes half of that passage of scripture and they always say well god will give me the desires of my heart mm, then what the bible says the bible says if you delight in my ways then i shall give you the desires of your heart and the reason why he will give you those desires because guess what he's going to change your desires for his desires and there's going to be a transformation that's going on and the things that you used to the things you 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 sought after the things that you desired in your life you would only, you only see those through a ray, a rose colored stained glass window but once god really gets a hold of you the blinders come off your eyes and you see that these things that you valued and these things that were so important to you are nothing anymore it's so trivial it's so trite it's so it's like almost like childish almost to say, I want this, I want that, I want this. Because when God changes your heart, right, he's also going to change your desires because they're going to be his desires and not yours. So he's going to preserve you. And he promised to protect you, did he not? He says, what did he say about, about angels? He said, I will give my angels charge over you to settle you in all of your ways. So not one foot will dash against a stone. So that's all under soteria or sozo, which is salvation. Salvation is just not accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior one and done. It's all of those other things combined. Through Sozo, through salvation, you were promised to be delivered from your enemies. Through Sozo, through salvation, through Soteria, you were promised to be preserved. Through Sozo and Soteria, you're promised to be under safety, under the wing of the Almighty. And finally, salvation that is promised to each and every one of us that will believe that's what soteria is